All right, so welcome to online sex ed. So these classes are presented by the University of Regina Students Union Sexual Health Outreach Program. My name is Robin. I am the Sexual Health Outreach Program Coordinator. Uh, these free workshops are intended to educate young adults about sexual health, relationships, healthy communication, self-agency, and more. Today, we are talking about porn literacy. And so this is part one of a two-part series about porn literacy. So welcome to Porn Literacy, part one. So again, this is the first of two workshops about pornography. And the intention of both of these workshops is to provide you with the information that you need to contextualize pornography and to help you make good decisions about using it with minimal negative effects. I want to give full credit. The information in this workshop is based upon the work of sex therapist, Dr. Marty Klein. So this quote, I think, says it all, and I think this is the perfect place to begin. Real sex doesn't feel like porn sex looks. And that's a quote directly from Dr. Marty Klein. So when we look at the dictionary definition, the dictionary defines pornography as printed or visual material containing the explicit description or display of sexual organs or activity to stimulate erotic rather than aesthetic or emotional feelings. So the intent of pornography is to stimulate erotic feelings. How do you define pornography? And I think this is really important for you to have a personal idea of what pornography means to you, what you would consider to be pornography and what you wouldn't consider to be pornography. And so you can even take a moment right now to jot down what you feel pornography is and also to jot down how you feel about it. So you might have very strong feelings about pornography. So it's really good to check in and, and decide how do you feel about engaging with this type of media. And then keep your pen and paper handy because I'm going to be taking you, you through some key questions from Dr. Klein that will help you de determine your current level of porn literacy. So these are they're kind of like true false questions that will help you to really dig into what you know to be true or what you might believe to be true about pornography. All right, what does porn literacy require? So there's a few things that we need to have in order to establish a level of porn literacy. The, so the first thing is information. So we need research-based, uh, evidence-based information about pornography. We need to know uh, based on, you know, what uh, I guess well-researched people have discovered about uh, pornography and what pornography contains and then how that compares to the real world. So we first need the information. And then from the information, we need to know how to talk about it. We need to have effective communication skills. So we need to understand, we need to be able to talk to one another. We need to feel open enough to ask questions and we need to be able to, uh, have these conversations in a in an open and non-judgmental space. We need to have options for asking questions. So I think that that's really important because when we open the door to conversation, there are going to be questions that come up. And so there needs to be a space to ask questions and to uh, not only to ask questions of those who are doing the research, who are who are providing the information, but also to ask questions of ourselves, right? So how do we feel about pornography? How do we feel about the information that we're being provided? So having that space to be uh, curious. And then having an idea of general media literacy. So what is media? And how does media, how do different types of media service. So in, you know, there is social media, which the intention of social media is to create a social connection. There is news media and the intention of news media is to give information about what's going on in the world. And then there's entertainment media and entertainment media, the intention is to entertain and to, uh, to create a almost like a fantasy world or a depiction of the world that is entertaining. And so we need to understand what 
media is and, and when we have that understanding then we can enter into the conversation what is uh, what is the the media of pornography and of course that fits into of course entertainment but also into entertainment with the intention of stimulating the erotic and then also sexual literacy so having a good understanding of sexuality of of human sexuality human relationship and bringing that understanding uh, that is uh, that is rooted in good solid research and uh, and uh, openness and bringing that into the conversation as well all right so I'm going to give you a series of statements. So these are all statements that will help you to determine your own level of porn literacy. So what you understand to be true or not true about porn, or maybe some beliefs that you have about porn that maybe you, when you're watching it, you've engaged with it, but you actually haven't really thought about what's really going on. So what I want you to do is when you, when you see the statement, just take a moment and answer to yourself, yes or no does this feel right to me does this do i know this or actually did i not even consider this so the first one is i know that porn is fiction and it's not real so there is a story being told through pornography and it is a fictional story that we are entertained by the second one is i know that professional porn is shot with actors and they're using a script and that entire scene is edited to create the illusion that it really happened as it seems. I know that the actors and actresses prepared off screen and they use products like Viagra, enemas, and lubricants to create the image, images that I see. So, None of this is seen on screen, yet all of these things are part of the production of pornography. I realize that I know nothing about porn actresses or actors as people. And I think this is really important that, that we don't know their sexual preferences, what they enjoy and how they behave sexually, that they are acting out a scene. I understand that most people don't have bodies like porn performers. I understand that some recurring images in porn are theatrical devices and actually don't reflect what men and women want to do. So porn is a representation of fantasy. It may not necessarily be a representation of human desire, it's a representation of human fantasy. And so some of the images are theatrical in order to allow us to experience the fantasy as though it's real happening in front of us. But that might not actually reflect what most men and women want to do. There we go. I understand that most people are not as uninhibited as the characters that I see in porn. Again, this is a scripted scene. And so in the scripted scene, things are going to flow very, very smoothly, and this might not reflect reality. I understand that no woman wants actual violence in sex. I understand that images of dominance and submission are cooperatively staged and end once the camera is turned off. All right, so here are some things that you can consider in when you're thinking about your relationship with pornography. So again, this might be something that you want to take some time to journal about. So again, if you have a pen or paper, write down these questions and then really consider uh, your answers to them and how you are relating or using or uh, what your beliefs are about pornography. So if you watch porn, 
why do you watch it? So what is the reason for watching porn? And just consider, you know, does that reason feel in alignment with your values and who you want to be as a person? And then think about how it makes you feel. So there may be many things that come up for you when you're watching porn in terms of, of how you feel. Some of those things may be related to conditioning uh, around feeling shameful around your sexuality. And some of those things might be because the content of the porn makes you feel uncomfortable. And some of those feelings might be because you actually really enjoy it and uh, all of the feelings are very positive. So this is really good to just check in and see how, how you feel. And if there's something that maybe you could do a little more digging into, maybe receive some support or some counseling around. So the first thing is, how do you feel before watching porn? while you're watching porn and then after you watch porn and then really feel into that and if you do engage regularly with porn having a, a you know making sure that it's something that you feel good about uh, is important and uh, you know if it's still feeling off looking at per potentially seeking counseling or maybe even changing the kind of pornography that you're watching do you have a good sexual connection with someone? So if you uh, are watching pornography regularly and you are in a relationship or you have a sexual relationship with someone, do you feel that that's a good connection? And really dig into when you answer this question, you know, is that sexual connection independent of your uh, of your pornography, not in the sense that you can absolutely do those things at the same time, but are you expecting uh, something out of your sexual connection, your intimate partner that you're seeing in porn? And when you go back to all of the, uh, the things that we just spoke about, remembering that porn isn't a reflection of real sexual experiences. And so just trying to create a distinction that the good sexual connection can uh, doesn't have to look like what you see uh, on the screen when you're watching pornography. And then finally, are you using porn for sex education? And I would highly recommend that this not be <laughs> your sex education and that uh, there are lots of other really great avenues for sex education. A great example is YouTube. There's a lot of really great sex education videos on YouTube, uh, following the Ursu account and continuing to watch these workshops. Lots of really great information is coming your way through these workshops. So uh, there's lots of really great education out there and there's lots of really great sex positive education out there. And I would say if you're using porn right now for that education, to, to use porn for entertainment, uh, to use porn to uh, to provide some some uh, feelings for feelings of eroticism to allow you to uh, access those feelings but not to use porn as as a sex education and this is another quote from dr uh, marty klein which is porn is a library of human sexual fantasy so one thing is that there are a lot of really strong beliefs around pornography and sometimes there's beliefs that that you know that that some of the things in pornography um you know are offensive or are are very um, hard to handle and i just you know i think it's really good to have this perspective that 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 this is a library of human sexual fantasy and that fantasy is very wide ranging some things we will like and some things we won't like if we don't like the range it's actually not the fault of porn because porn doesn't reflect true desire. Porn is fantasy. And I think when we can start to create that, that distinction between what true desire is and what, what real sex feels like in comparison to porn, we can have a, a, a different relationship with pornography and one that is potentially healthier. So porn literacy. So you might feel some pain around porn. So these are some things that I, I think are really worth feeling into and digging into and, and pursuing. If you have any of these feelings, then seeking some healing in these areas can help you to have a, a better relationship uh, with pornography. So the first one is 
you might feel pain because you watch more than you intend to. So you might uh, find that you're using porn as an outlet for self-soothing and there might be other ways you prefer to self-soothe and you, you tend to watch more than you want to. Um, you might feel guilty about watching porn. Uh, you might feel inadequate when you compare yourself to porn. If you have a por partner who watches porn, you might actually also feel inadequate when you compare yourself to the porn that your partner is watching. I, if you feel like you want a partner, again, who has a perfect body like the ones you see in porn, and again, like we said, like I said earlier, that the bodies that we see in pornography aren't representative of most human bodies that they are, uh, I want to say, unusual, uh, and not in a bad way, but they're unusual in the fact that they are um, oftentimes um, bodies that are exaggerated to emphasize the, um, the erotic. I know my partner doesn't like it when I watch porn, and I don't like keeping secrets about watching porn. If your partner watches porn, you might feel like your partner has a secret life that doesn't include you and you feel left out. And you might not understand why your partner watches or likes porn. And if your partner watches porn, you might feel like you trust your partner less because of that. So these are all very legitimate feelings of pain that you might have around porn. And these are all things that are worth uh, feeling into and even if necessary, getting support around. So communication, as always, in any kind of relationship, in any kind of uh, relationship to one another, but even relationship to a form of media like pornography, communication is key. So if you have a partner and you like to watch pornography, or if your partner likes to watch pornography, this is an opportunity for you to have a conversation about this. And if it's something that you would like to engage with together, you might want to consider seeking out something that is an ethical pornography. So this would be looking for sites where you're paying a, a membership fee or a pay-per-view fee rather than one of the free porn sites, because then you know in those ethical porn sites, porn sites where you're paying that the actors and actresses are also being fairly paid for the work that they do, because this is their job, this is work. And this is something that maybe then will open the door for, for enjoying that together. And just maybe establishing uh, what feels uh, comfortable, or so what are, the, what are the boundaries around pornography that, uh, that work inside the relationship. And when there's boundaries, I think it's really important for both partners to respect the boundaries. And also both partners have uh, the uh, opportunity to, to say if those boundaries are not met or not kept, that the relationship doesn't have to continue. So really being clear about what your boundaries are and, uh, and having that conversation is important in order to make sure that pornography isn't going to hurt your relationship. If you do find or you're feeling like pornography is becoming problematic in your life, so if a lot of those pain points that I mentioned earlier are really starting to uh, uh, take, take a controller or consume a large part of your thinking or your mental space, uh, then you can actually talk to a therapist about this. So one resource would be to use Ursu's My Wellness Program, where there is online counseling offered uh, through the My Wellness Program for students at the U of R. And then, of course, you can always seek out online therapy or uh, talk to a therapist, uh, get a recommendation for a therapist from your doctor or uh, from someone you trust in your community and seek therapy. It's always a good idea to have a, someone who is an expert to have this conversation and to help support you through, through the feelings that you might be having about pornography. And then also remember that watching pornography isn't inherently shameful and that the key to all of this is having a really good understanding of what you're watching. And when you have that understanding, you can support having a healthy relationship with this kind of media. And that's why 
this uh, workshop about porn literacy and having this understanding and having this dialogue right now is so important. And again, the most important thing, enjoy what's real. So learning how to explore pleasure and intimacy independently of pornography. So something that happens in the space where pornography isn't the guiding, uh, isn't providing the framework for what you should and should not be doing. And it's, that is just a really wonderful way to connect with what feels, what real sex feels like. And again, exploring on your own. So you can explore on your own those self-pleasure. And with ongoing consent and open communication, you can also explore with your partner or your partners if you have them. Again, have fun, be curious, and let pleasure lead the way instead of a curated, a curated media expectation of what sexuality ought to look and feel like. And what I mean by that is let your sensations of pleasure lead the way into uh, exploration rather than the thoughts around what you've seen in pornography, which again is a curated experience. It's something that is scripted and written and created to produce a particular outcome. So don't let that be the guide. Let your sensations in your body and the experiences that you're having and connecting to that again and again and again be the guide in enjoying what's real in front of you with, with yourself or with a partner. And that's it for the, the first part of this workshop. So there is absolutely more to come. There's another workshop on Friday where I'll go into some of the common myths about pornography, but thank you for joining. And I, if you do have more questions, I can, excuse me, <clears throat> answer your questions now. Yes. So the question that uh, was asked is, are we talking specifically about professional porn then? Yes, I am talking specifically about professional porn. I do, uh, I do not have a framework right now for understanding amateur porn. Uh, and so that is something that I can definitely look into for Friday because I'm going to be talking more about the images that we see in pornography and other types of pornography. So that's something that on Friday's workshop I will definitely have a little bit more information about. Uh, but the framework for understanding, as you can see, just in how we're having that conversation is definitely more geared towards the, the professional pornography for sure. All right, are there any more questions? I'm gonna just assume that there, there's none. I know sometimes it takes time to write out a question, but thank you so much for watching. If you do have questions, you can always reach out. So you can head to my Instagram, which is at Ursu is Instagram.com slash Ursu Sexual Health. So U R S U Sexual Health. Or you can send me an email, sexual health at Ursu U R U R S U at Ursu.ca. So if you want, you can send your questions directly to me and or uh, take this away. Feel into some of these questions and uh, think about the material that was covered here. And you can come to the workshop on Friday and learn a little bit more and perhaps get a few, uh, you could ask your questions at that time and maybe receive some clarification on Friday. So thank you so much for joining. And like I said, our next part two is going to be on Friday at noon, same place. Uh, and uh, if you want to catch the replay or dig into these questions, maybe you didn't have a pen handy, uh, this will be posted on our YouTube channel and that will be going up to sometime later on today. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing day.